All right, so I just tried to record myself like five times in a row. Hopefully this time it will work. But I wanted to <coughs> to tell you guys about a few maps that I just bought. I bought them in Columbia, Pennsylvania, which is a very old town outside of York, Pennsylvania. And so I initially had stopped in New York, Pennsylvania, and I was just trying to find old maps. So I went to the first antique store that showed up when I Googled it. And I stopped there, and the guy was like, oh, I don't have any maps here. I'm sorry, but um, I have another spot in Columbia where I have a full box of maps. And I was like, oh, okay, so I'll go there. So it was a little out of the way, but... It was like 13 miles out of the way, maybe 14 miles out of the way, on the other side of the Susquehanna River. But uh, I was like, I have time to kill, so drove over there. And to be honest, the maps were like pretty bad, but there there were enough of them that I was able to find a few uh, kind of cool ones. So so I got four, or what what I thought was four really turns out to be more like three. So the first one that I thought was a map that's not really a map is actually more about um, just trains. <laughs> and so you can see how this is like many pages so I was like oh this is a huge map. But it's it's really just showing that the times and the routes um, for the different trains it's called Missouri Missouri Pacific Lines. So it actually goes shows train routes and uh, departure times and all that all that jazz from cities all the way to New Mexico City to St. Louis to California. You know anything west of the Mississippi River really. Um, so it's actually really cool in that sense. It's from 1952, so this is like the pinnacle of passenger train. Uh, ridership, you know, after World, World War II, before the interstate program or highways were enti entirely finished, everybody was still riding the trains, and this is also before, you know, passenger planes got just huge and way, way better, way faster than trains, obviously, ever could be. So it's, it's cool, it's got some drawings on it, uh, forklift. Probably, the forklift was probably just invented in 1952, to be honest. Great invention. So he's having fun with that. Uh, the next one is a Taxico. They made a bazillion of these, I'm sure. But it's still cool. Um, there's one I have, and it, it, this one specifically kind of caught my eye just because um, the the graphic designer or you know the team that put these maps together so this cover was I have one that's just like it but a Buffalo Rochester area like Western New York and it's the same graphic design artist so it, it, this is like a picture of Buffalo but with just Buffalo buildings and so this one's New York City and that's pretty much pretty standard New York City map um, and I have like three New York City maps in my small collection, but New York City maps, basically, they're pretty much very similar. On one side you got Manhattan, and then, so here's Manhattan. And this is actually done very well, I think I got it the wrong way. This, this, this is done very well, I think, just the way that... Manhattan is uh, just laid out how it fits on the page. It just looks really nice. And then on the other side, the flip side is, you know, boroughs. So you got Brooklyn down here, Queens, Queens, Jamaica. And just one thing that I wanted to point out about this map is look at how much bigger. LaGuardia is, or excuse me, JFK is than LaGuardia. So, what I like to look at, at, what I think old maps are cool, or just maps in general, is how 
is how they illustrate is how they illustrate the things that they're illustrating. So I never before looking at this map, honestly, I never knew how much bigger JFK is than LaGuardia, but it's just not even close. And this map, you know, has all the buildings labeled. It's got the terminal. It's got all the runways and everything. And not not every map does that. So this even even more so than Google Maps, it illustrates the size difference between the two airports like better than any map I've ever I've ever seen. And that's not you know as a designer, if you're designing these maps, if you're putting them together, that's it's easier said than done. It's not easy to to illustrate a si you know that size difference, and but uh, really even you know it's probably not that easy to see on this camera just but um, the the color you know they indicated the airports with the purple color and it really pops out and um, even more so like I was saying like with Google Maps if you if you just go in over New York City on satellite view of Google Maps like those airports like you're not going to really be able to see those airports that clearly as you could see in that map and um, even if you went to like the map view in Google Maps it wouldn't I don't think it would pop like it does with that so that's just one reason why I like maps is because every map does something better than you know even if it's something really small like that it, it does it's it can be very functional and really help people comprehend something that they previously were not able to understand or or they, they just didn't know and so I learned something looking at that map you know JFK is way bigger than LaGuardia I, I've just never flown there I guess but and then I don't think I've yeah uh, Boston to Buffalo pretty cool pretty cool map it's actually really not that cool but it's the concept of it that's cool. So Interstate 90, um, which I've driven several times. I've, I've driven to, to Boston a couple times. But Boston to Buffalo, just nice alliteration right there. Um, Boston, Buffalo, <laughs> Interstate 90. Um, it's just straight east to west pretty much. And you know, really, if you look at it on a map, and this is totally by accident, but Buffalo and Boston are really pretty much the same distance from the equator. So, you know, same latitude. And, um, but the cool, the cool thing about this map, and, you know, it's 1983, so it's the, the graphic design or whatever, it's just nothing special. It's just a map, you know, nothing special. But it's what they mapped that's cool. So they just mapped like a certain radius or certain sections immediately around Interstate 90 because they thought, oh, well, if you're traveling on Interstate 90, then maybe you just care about the things that are immediately around Interstate 90, you know, if you have to stop for a hotel or whatever. And so it's the concept. So that, that's why I bought this map. This map was a dollar, but I bought it because I was like, that's kind of like a cool, it's a cool idea to make a map just of this. And I'm just going to show you the flip side. So the way that they did New York, New York was the same. They just they have four sections because New York is obviously bigger than Massachusetts. So they did two sections: an A and B section of Massachusetts around Interstate 90, and then on New York they have four sections: A, B, C, D, E. Five, <laughs> five sections. And um, so from top to bottom, you probably, you know, you're not really going to be able to see it, but I can just point and just kind of tell you about it. So over here you got Grand Island. So obviously, again, the map, it's, it's backwards how it is in real life. But um, you go basically from west to east. So you got the, the Buffalo to Rochester section, then you got Rochester to about Syracuse section. And then actually you have a little bit on beyond Buffalo. So you have Dunkirk over here along Lake Erie. Um, then down here, Syracuse, Utica, and then just... Okay, continuing. Um, 
So where I left off, sorry, the, the screen went blank, so I gotta had to restart the video. So that's why there's an edit. Um, but just continuing from west to east, and then just here's the close up. So it just shows you the different sections. There's obviously Interstate 90. So I just thought it was kind of cool, really unique. Again, it's the concept of some of these maps that are the reason why I buy the maps or why I think they're cool. It's not just how they look. And the last one that I got was of Philadelphia. I'll read the, the, uh, the cover here. It says, Hagstrom's Street and House Number Map of Philadelphia, showing trolley lines, subways, bus routes, automobile routes. J.L. Smith Company. Maps of everywhere since 1868. And it was 50 cents, which kind of tells you that it was probably somewhat old. I don't know how old it was. And this map's a little bit trickier to open up. It's two different maps, actually, which is cool. And one of them is like, I think, north side. Uh, one of them's like north side Philadelphia, I think. And then the other one is like of downtown where they pretty much have city hall in like the center of the map which is cool and you know it's obviously it's old enough just open up like just a part of it see all these maps they got all these boring it's not the map itself it's just the street index which is just completely irrelevant today you just don't need you don't need that. But, I mean, that's how they made maps, so it comes, it's just a package, you know. And this camera is trying to do a terrible job of just showing the true beauty of this, but it's just the green and yellow and black. It's in inc it's incredible condition. It's probably, the map is probably from I don't know. It might be like the 30s or 40s, honestly. Just judging by the font that they used and stuff. And uh, you can see where there's all this like, open land. And that's when I'm looking at maps to like when I'm considering buying a map. Like that's something that I look at. I look at like the open space where clearly today it's different. Like you know. Like, you just know that some of this land that's open land on this map has been developed. Like, there's new streets. Um, and this was before any of the highways. So, right there, you know, this is be before 1950. Um, so, it's, it's really kind of a glimpse into the past of Philadelphia. Philadelphia being one of the most important cities in the history of the world, really, when you think about it. Uh, American history is incredibly important to the entire world and so it was eight dollars that map was eight dollars um, the Buffalo to Boston to Buffalo map was um, one dollar and then the train one which isn't really a map was eight dollars and then this one was one dollar um, but I think when you when you package all of them together it was a solid deal solid deal um, I think I think maps are going to be even more and it just so happened like I, I it doesn't affect like this isn't the reason why I'm buying maps is because I think that I'm going to be able to sell them for a fortune like I'm just collecting maps just because I like maps but I, I do think that maps are just going to be more sought after in the future um, I think people are just going to find they're just going to respect maps and the artwork that that went into them and just all the work with old technology to put these maps together is actually very impressive. That's people don't really think about. Um, but anyways, I just wanted to show you guys my maps. Um, I think they're pretty cool. And uh, if I find more cool maps, then I'll probably want to share them with you guys. So thanks for watching.